I have a question. Excellent. Um, one of the it's from Microsoft Corporation. It's from Microsoft Corporation, yeah. and it says official winning notification. We wish to use this medium to congratulate you over your success in this year's annual promotion of the results of the email electronic online sweepstakes organized by Microsoft. Wicked. And uh, you won. Well, you what know, do, I just you feel so lucky. Well, I'm I'm a little bit afraid because I'm wondering if this is. Uh, one of those things that you don't want to respond to because there's. I wonder if I could if I could pull up this email and have a look. How incredibly affectionately authentic known looking. as spam or scam. That's the thing. Okay, so what do we notice about this? It looks like it's from Microsoft, and this is you know we've we've talked about this kind of stuff before, where it's like you got to be careful what you open on the web because mm -hmm. something may look convincing. Mm -hmm. But it could be fraud. It could be something that's meant to try to get your personal information. And they can have a very authentic-looking logo. And, Certainly and can. As you can see here, it, it looks pretty authentic. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen them from PayPal, and you know, people will click the link to. Uh, it'll say, you know, somebody has compromised our servers. Click here to change your password. And then you go to the website, and it says, and it looks just like PayPal, mm -hmm. and it says, enter your old password what would you like your new password to be? So what do they do? They enter their old password, then they punch in their new password. Now, whoever that person is has access to your PayPal account because you just entered your old password, which is really their existing it. password. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be very careful when we're opening these, these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. This particular one says that we've won, I mean, obviously, okay, uh, 500,000 pounds. That's our first, you know, ob obviously that's ridiculous. Um, I didn't enter a contest with Microsoft. Microsoft is not the kind of company that just calls people up at random and says, here, have $500,000. Mm -hmm. They don't do that. What they do is they update your computer and reboot it without asking. But they don't hand out 500,000 pounds. <laughs> All right, not going to happen. But what we can look at here, some of the things that we see is, one, my name is nowhere on the email. It doesn't say, hello, Robbie Ferguson, you have this opportunity. So that's a red flag. Sometimes they'll say, dear sir, dear madam, or dear Robbie, because maybe my email address says Robbie at category five or something like that. Right. So they grab your name and you think, oh, well, that looks legitimate, but it's not. That's the first thing I want to look for. Two, says undisclosed recipients. Well, if this was really to me, it's going to have my email address there. Probably my name. From, here's the biggest red flag, Microsoft Corporation. That looks authentic. Reservus at marcosgamero.cl. <laughs> Welcome to Marcus Gernero Windows, version 7. <laughs> or wh however you say all that. Obviously not a Microsoft email, so you can just uh, mark that as junk. Delete it completely. Ignore that kind of stuff and be very, very careful what you open. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these things can carry, uh, you know, you click a link and it will bring up malware on your computer if you're using Windows. It's especially susceptible. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got to be very, very careful of that kind of stuff. But, of course, no matter what platform you're using, you're susceptible to what are called fishers and, you know, uh, people who are trying to get your personal information. If you click on something that you think is legitimate and you think that, uh, you know, you, oh, it's okay to go to this website or it's okay to click here, um, you just got to be very careful. No so. bank uh, or organization will ask you for your password online or by telephone. Even if even if my bank calls me and says, you know, we we need such and such information from you to you know to authorize this or that, it's well, you know, no, that's not going to happen. So you got to watch phone people too. Uh, Cruiser three saying that his dad got an email from the FBI the other day. That's intriguing. They're everywhere. Yep, John Roberts saying no bank would ever ask for your password, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. Unless, you know, unless you've got like a phone uh, authorization code or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Good rule of thumb, never respond to someone that you don't recognize. But even if you do recognize them, it might not be who you think it is. True. Viruses do what's called spoofing. So it looks like it's coming from mom, 
but it's actually coming from Joe Blow down the street who has a virus in his computer and has both you and your mom in their address mm, book, right? True. So it could look like it's completely legitimate. So what do you do in that case? In that case, you call mom and say, did you send me this weird email? What's this link that you sent me Right. before you click on it? Yeah, do I click on this link that ends in .exe? <laughs> <laughs> Not usually. <laughs> Why would you send me an executable program, Mum? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So could you say that if someone sends you something that ends in like JPEG or M MVW or something, could, could you say that that generally would be safe? WMV or video? WMV. Um, it could be, but you want to know who it's from. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it depends on everyone is different, right? But hackers and people who are trying to get your information are doing everything they can to try to make you think that the email is legitimate. Mm -hmm. So just imagine that they're out to, to trick you into thinking that you're opening something that's safe. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just be mindful of it, that's all. Uh, Poet of Zwan saying, what about URL shorteners and the problems with those? So I, I take it you're meaning like tiny URL, things like that. You've got to be careful. Um, looking at, let's say, tiny URL uh, as the example. What you can do, let's see if I can find it on their website. Uh, yeah, if, if you get a tiny URL, for example, uh, address. So let's say, okay, let's take... Category 5.tv. Okay, and we're going to make that tiny. So, category 5.tv now becomes that. So, if I go to that, it's going to take me to category 5.tv. But when I send that link to somebody, they don't know what they're actually clicking on, right? So, what you can do with that tiny URL or whatever it is, if they offer a preview feature, is you go over to their website, tinyurl.com, and you go preview feature over on the left here. And what that's going to allow you to do is take that, um, that address that, that you were given, you enable that feature, and now when I go to tinyurl.com slash whatever, it tells me first that it's going to redirect to category5.tv. Do I want to proceed? So that's just using tinyurl as the example, but there are ways to make sure that you're, you're finding out what that link is going to take you to. Of course, you can use stuff like uh, wget. Go into your terminal and do wget space and then the URL that you were given and see what comes up, see, if it, see where it redirects to. I'm sure that would work too. And then that way, you're, not, uh, you're just downloading the file. You're not actually activating anything or loading it in a browser. <laughs>